Hey, I'm Carly from Garnet Geckos, and today I'm going to show you our isopod collection. You may call them wood lice, pill bugs, roly polies, creepy crawlies. Um, they have a bunch of different names, but I think you'll really enjoy them. We have a variety of morphs, and I can't wait to show you. Stay tuned. So these are our dairy cow enclosures. They are um, just sterilite tubs with holes drilled in the sides of them. And then they have a layer of eco earth mixed with forest floor. Um, and then a lot of layers of leaves, um, cuddle bone, which is the stuff right here. And um, we have magnolia pods in there. So I'm going to show you what these dairy cows look like. Come on, dairy cows, come on out. So dairy cows are extremely prolific, which is why we have two full bins of them. Prolific meaning they breed very quickly. So these ones have little spots on them. So I'm going to find somebody. So here is a little dairy cow. This one's probably about half size. So this is just a little dairy cow running around. They're super cute, but these have like a cream base and then little black spots and little antennae and tiny little legs. So these are technically crustaceans, which I find super fascinating. They roll in a little ball when they get scared. Yeah, these guys rarely roll in a ball for you. Here's a little bit of a size comparison for you. Oop, there they go, falling all over. Roly poly. Roly poly. They're super cute. So in here we have some sycamore leaves. Magnolia leaves are these bigger ones, these like long round ones. And then we have oak leaves. So kind of a cool assortment for them to play with. Um, and then I always love the cuddle bone for extra calcium for them. So we also offer our isopods, our isopod diet which is like a combination of different seeds, cornmeal, um, oak leaves, magnolia leaves, like all ground together uh, with some dried crickets and dried locusts and mealworms. Um, and additionally, I add uh, calcium and vitamin D3 to this um, ice pod diet. This is available on our Etsy shop. And it's really cool. My friend did the artwork for us and um, we really love to feed this to our ice pods. So I'm gonna feed them and add some more leaves, believe it or not, to these enclosures because they eat holes like straight through them. You can kind of see here, it's a really good example. So they actually like eat straight through those leaves. And so I'm gonna add some more and spray them, give them a good spray down this time. And um, yeah, so that's the dairy cows. So this is our zebras. Um, another thing I like to add is our leftover snake skin um, from when our animals shed. I will just kind of break up the snake shed and put it into the ice pod enclosures. So these are the zebras. I'm gonna look, there's a big one, a big zebra just running. They are prominently black and have stripes on them. So here is a really good example of a zebra. You can see the stripes like completely cut through. Oop, bye buddy. Holding on to that little piece of dirt for dear life. <laughs> so yeah, those are the zebras. Super cool. These ones have black antennae versus the other ones had white. Go back, go back in there. So yeah. They have also in here, oh, try to focus. They have like some wood branches that they hide under, lots of different options for them. And we're gonna get them a, sometimes we put our leftover crusted gecko diet in here, just as like a little treat for them. Um, less waste that way if somebody really didn't eat it. And then of course a magnolia pod and we're gonna add a little bit of our isopod diet into here cause they don't really have any left. 
So here is our powder orange colony. It is absolutely massive. And this is what we use for all of our bioactive enclosures here because they do really well with crusted geckos. Yeah, you can literally just take a scoop of any of the dirt and just bam, there's isopods in it. Oh, that was a bad example. Oh no, they all fell. <laughs> take, it. take that out. <laughs> no giggle. So we use these for our bioactive enclosures and they actually have like a powdery look to them right when they're about to shed. So they turn like this dark, vibrant orange as they grow up. I really like these little guys and they do well with crested geckos. So it's really awesome that we have just such a, such a great colony of them. They're so cool looking. We actually have two. Yeah, we have two colonies of these guys that are just like this. This is just the big one. So whenever you guys order powder oranges from us, this is where they come from. So you probably saw what it was like just a second ago, but I added a ton of leaves into here and these guys will actually just completely absorb it into there and destroy them. So this, I do this probably once a month and I give them like a whole new layer and every six months we'll divide the colony and start a new one. So we'll take half the substrate out, put new in and we'll move that colony either into like little mini colonies for people to start their own or um, we will just have two in our house. So that's how we got these guys. So these guys are doing the same exact thing over here, but they are separate from those. So we just keep, keep breeding them and we'll use the dirt to make bioactives um, as we have more crusted geckos too. Looks like these guys just had a baby boom, uh, but these are the magic potions. They actually have little yellow and black spots on them. You can kind of see on these guys. There's a big guy. Check out this. I think that these guys look so cool in these pods. There's the yellow and stuff. You can really see the yellow on this guy. The camera really does not want to cooperate today. Whoa, check out this one. Here we go. Let me put it down nope. so it stops shaking. Yeah. Now you can really see his colors. And all the little babies. Look at all those little babies as he runs around. No. We were watching you guys. Oh, here's a couple more. And the teeny tiny babies. Look at the little baby. Springtails. Oh, I got springtails on my nails. All the little white things running around over here are springtails. And then this size over here is like the smallest baby isopod. And then here's like an adult isopod and then like a sub-adult isopod. So. Next we have our puddings. They are also very prolific. And the second we pick this up, there's probably gonna be just a million of them. Oh my goodness. These guys are so cool. They're white, they're yellow, they're orange. There's, there's all different kinds in there. There's a pretty good variety in these guys, yeah. You can see all the different sizes. I like that really big white one over there. It's right in front. This guy. Yeah. He looks really cool. Look at everybody running around. So here's my favorite. Just give us a second. There's some babies right there. Here are some little baby rubber ducks. These rubber duck ice pods have a ton of springtails in there with them. Um, but I'm going to have to get a good picture of these guys' face so you can see what they really look like. Here is a rubber ducky isopod in his natural environment, not afraid. So cute. 
believe it or not, these little guys sell for $20 a piece. So if you ever want to start your own colony, it's going to cost a pretty penny. We are hopeful that we're able to offer them a little bit cheaper than the rest of the world, but unfortunately breeding them is um, a little more complicated than we were anticipating. They breed a lot more slowly than other species. Oh my God, they're so cool. Look at this little guy. I love that their antenna kind of looks like a mustache. He's so cute. Doesn't it? We're gonna stop bothering them and let them get back to business. Little black antenna look like a mustache. They kind of do look like a mustache. It's just a very formal duck. Hello, Donald. Nice to meet you. Once again, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you learned a little bit about keeping isopods and what they need. Additionally to all that you saw in this video, we do spray them down once or twice a day, uh, just 50% of their habitat to keep the humidity up and we like to offer them our leftover uh, raw vegetables from what we feed our Euromastix and Bearded Dragon. So if you're looking to keep isopods, they are a great uh, compost bin, if you will, for, for those leftover uh, vegetables and they really enjoy them. Thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, check out our link tree, which has our Etsy shop, Patreon, um, you can access our Discord community. It's really a great platform to be able to connect with everyone. And I hope that you learned something today and check out our next video. Thank you so much.